All right, good morning, folks. <clears throat> it is the AM icebreaker for Tuesday, what, April 3rd? Yeah, let's say April 3rd. And uh, back at it, was traveling early yesterday. As some of you guys know, I was flying back from Austin, where I was at the Honored Academy Barbell Cert. Uh, it was an interesting experience. Um, I'm not going to talk about that too much unless somebody really wants to hear about it. If you do, leave me a comment, leave me a question, and we'll talk about that. But, um, yeah, let's see. So what do I have coming up that's interesting? A lot of Viking Ninja stuff going on, really, like I said. So if you're not following the Viking Ninja folks on Instagram, um, please do. We've been posting schedules, links to uh, upcoming dates, and we're going to start posting more technique videos for the martial arts stuff. And speaking of that, let's get right to it. First off, it is uh, another new knife day, so really excited about this one. This is a Kershaw Natrix. Um, I've been wanting one of these for a while. Main reason being... Um, it's, it's patterned after a zero tolerance knife that I'm really interested in, the, uh, the 0770. And uh, this thing is great. It's uh, super light, super low profile. That's the thing that surprised me most about it. I mean, comparing this to another knife is almost like, uh, well, here, if I pull up my other, what, my other one I'm carrying today, this is a Kershaw Link. I mean, it's almost like comparing like, a, like an Ultrabook and an, and an Alienware laptop, right? But um, yeah, I really like this thing. They're on sale at uh, Blade HQ and uh, both knife center. I think they retail for like 70, but I got this one for 30. I think they're on sale for a little while longer, so so yeah, grab one of these. It's a great little low-profile EEC, and it looks cool too. So, and it's actually cool that today is a new knife day because today's question comes from my buddy Nico Nick Nichols, who's uh, an amazing uh, FMA practitioner in his own right, and uh, he asks, what are some of the benefits, or can you talk about some of the benefits you've gotten from kettlebell training? Thank you for that question. That is actually one of my favorite questions. That's one of my favorite things in the world to talk about. Um, you guys have been following me for a, while, for a while know that I love kettlebells. I mean, I've been training with kettlebells for, God, almost 20 years. I think the first time I swung a kettlebell was 2002, maybe. And uh, I don't even remember how I got into it. I think, uh, I, I mean, I basically it was like I went into a gym one day. I saw a kettlebell there. And I think I'd probably seen them on T Nation or something. You know, T Nation, those guys were always, you know, they've always, whatever you think about T Nation, they, they, they have had some hits and they've been right about a lot of things and ahead of their time for a lot of things too. And uh, so I was like, oh, cool. Here's, here's one of those things I've been seeing. So, you know, obviously um, this was back before um, it was easy to get to like an, an RKC or an SFG for me. Uh, I actually, I don't even think the SFG existed at the time. But uh, so I taught myself to swing poorly and do get ups and and all that good stuff. And um, the thing I can say about kettlebells for the benefit is there's there's so many. And I'm gonna I'm gonna try to keep this to five ten minutes because I could talk about this for an hour. But um, first off, um, I mean there's there's all the obvious things. You know you're gonna get I mean you're gonna get strength. You're gonna get conditioning. You're gonna get you know you're gonna get strength endurance from. I mean if you just do swings for a while, you know anybody who's done a lot of swings, you're gonna get. I mean you know how that makes you feel. You know you, you feel strong. You feel a little gassed out. You feel activated. I mean there, it, it's just a good exercise. I mean. I, I don't know if I'm enough of a zealot to say that it's the king of exercises, but it's definitely up there. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. It's one of those exercises that, like, you know, if, if I could only do one exercise for the rest of my life, that I, I'd probably say that's one. I, I, it's really hard for me to say one because there's a bunch of other, you know, I mean, I mean, you know, steel club pullovers is, the, is, is up there, too. But that's definitely, like, on that list. So aside from more conventional benefits, some of the things that um, – I think you can get that I've uh, that I've picked up on recently, you know, in the last 18 months doing, you know, doing like a lot of John Russin's work, you know, FHT focusing on things like quality contractions, activation, priming is uh, first of all, structural integration. Um, this is why I've become a really big fan of the, we'll call it the hard style kettlebell swing or, um, or, you know, the Russian kettlebell swing as some people call it. But, you know, if you're, you know, if you're doing a, you know, properly packed shoulders and you're snapping your hips through and making sure that, you know, everything is, is you know, is structurally integrated at the top. Like, you know, they talk about, you know, pulling your kneecaps into your, into your quads and, and, and all, the, all those things. It, you know, I think if you, if you get to where you can do good solid reps like that for a decent number, like you're going to have a different, you know, you're going to have like that, what they call old man strength, right? I mean, some people call it functional strength, I guess, but I don't. Yeah, let's let's not even go there. Um, you know, because because not only are you training your muscles, but you're training your nervous system. You know, it's it's all about that neural neural drive, holding that tension, conditioning your tissues as well. So that's one thing. Um, another thing is just mobility. I mean, if you're doing and you look at look at the swing, right? The swing is a great exercise to to really highlight hip mobility. I mean, that's honestly like. Outside of, of directed mobility work, when I feel like I need to kind of bump that back up, you know, I'll add swings in my program. Um, additionally, you know, the Turkish getup, mobility, stability. You know, I mean, people think, 
you know, people think it's just a goofy thing you do for Instagram. You know, you try to pick up a barbell or you, or you, or you, you pick up your girlfriend or your boyfriend or something, you know, something silly like that. But honestly, now I'm a bigger fan of just doing it. Like, I mean, you know, you know the, the way they teach it is like, is you put a shoe on your fist. And if you can, if you can do a, a get up with and with and keep the shoe level, you know, you, you're ready to load. But I, I say stay there. I say stay there and really work that, that neural drive work, you know. We, you know, this is something we've been talking about a lot. Make the lightweights feel heavy, or get like a get a really light kettlebell and go bottoms up, you know, and really just work on that that activation, you know. No, you know, I mean, because that's the thing, right? I mean, I see people nowadays beasting their way through like way too heavy get ups, and, and they're just kind of flopping all over the place. I mean, seriously, like at the bottom, some of you guys look like <clears throat> some of you guys look like like fish out of water. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm calling people out. So, done properly, I think, you know, like I said. Those are that's that's the big unconventional benefit you can get from the way you can load with a kettlebell, and that's something I'd like to see people move towards more is uh, is using using kettlebells more for that sort of stuff, that neural drive and structural integration versus, like I said, just doing dumb shit with a heavy kettlebell. I mean, you know, I mean, we've all seen that great video of uh, I think it was maybe it was Kane Velasquez or somebody doing these really awful, awful half swing, half upright row, God only knows what they were with a kettlebell that was way too heavy for him. I mean, you know, no, no offense, but, but they were just way too heavy for what he was trying to do. So I, I would say back off, you know, I mean, quit, you know, don't, you know, I mean, be, be, be the guy who can, who can press a 48, who can, I'm sorry, who can press a, like a, tw press and clean like a 24 kilogram kettlebell, like smoothly and solidly versus the guy who can just kind of, oh yeah, I pressed the 48. It's like, well, did you, or did the 48 press you? You know, so yeah, so and then, so that's it. Um, yeah, kettlebells, that's what they're awesome for. All right, cheers.